love them or hate them, wheelie bins are an essential part of modern life. Without them, we'd be drowning in rubbish. Seen on every street corner, some homes have up to four of them. In the UK, we create an incredible 30 million tonnes of household waste every year. And wheelie bins help us recycle at least half of it. MGB here in Rotherham are the UK's largest wheelie bin manufacturer and they make more than 2.5 million wheelie bins a year. The modern plastic wheelie bin was invented by a slough-based company in the late 70s. They were rolled out across the country in the 80s as looking around big, heavy metal bins couldn't really go on. The haters claimed the bins were plastic monstrosities that blighted our neighbourhoods, and the Daily Mail's massive front page headline shows how it encouraged readers to join the campaign to reject the bins. They may not look lovely, but these rectangular plastic containers on wheels with hinged lids and a handle made bin day easier for everyone. Now, Nearly 82% of English councils have adopted them in all colours and sizes. And creating a wheelie bin is more exciting than you may think. They're made by injection moulding. More of that later. First, we need the raw ingredient. The wheelie bin making starts when opaque plastic pellets are delivered here in tankers. Well, boy. Once the pellets are delivered to site, we store them in the silos that you can see behind me. There are 13 silos, each one holding 75 tonnes. That's one day's worth of bin-making ingredients. The material that we use is HDPE. So when it's delivered to us, it's delivered in pellet form. Polythene, or HDPE, is used because it's hard-wearing and doesn't rot. It's also used to make things like underground pipes and garden chairs. The bins need to withstand being outside in the British weather all year round. Once we need them in the factory, the pellets are then blown through the pipes into the factory to be used in the machines. Wheelie bins are colour-coded to help sort recyclable waste. Different coloured bins in some places are seen as iconic and have even become a source of pride. So to make wheelie bins in up to 50 different colours, the opaque pellets have to be dyed. We only add the colour that the customer requires. So if you want a blue bin, we add blue dye. If you want a red bin, then we will add red dye. We only add a small amount of dye and then that will colour this material up. And they don't just use the new stuff, they use recycled plastic too. This used to be a wheelie bin. It's been ground down into its original form. We don't have to add the colour, we simply put it through the machines and mould a brand new bin out of this material. Making a wheelie starts with blending. The new pellets that came from the silos are added to a blender and mixed with pellets that have a special concentrated colour pigment and are dyed. We call it master batch. The reason we call it master batch is because it's colouring the full batch of the material. We only add it in a very small percentage, but that very small percentage gives us the colour that we require. One in every hundred pellets contain dye. Magic recipe to make a bright, shiny, new coloured wheelie bin. After the pellets have been dyed, it's time for the injection moulding. Modern injection moulding machines are bespoke and manufacture most of today's plastic products. The pellets are fed into the injection moulding machine. The machine has a rotating screw inside that turns at 55 revolutions per minute, which melts them. This is a very high pressure, high heat area. So we can't have a clear tube like you would have in a syringe and they become a melted, gloopy goo, like this. It's 
So the temperatures that we're talking about on injection are somewhere between 260 and 290 degrees C. So we've got a molten mass that's then waiting to be injected into the injection mold tool. And the mold is the shape of a bin. The wheelie bin shaping mold is made of steel and weighs a whopping 30 tons. It's clamped together with a force of 2,700 tons to hold the two halves together. The melted plastic is pumped around it at high pressure. The mold is cold and the plastic solidifies and becomes a bin shape almost as soon as the mold is filled. It takes less than a minute to make one 240 litre wheelie bin, which weighs 7.5 kilos. The robot then will come in, pick the bin up out of the machine, take it out of the machine and then drop it onto the conveyor. The bin is now about 90 degrees when it comes out of the machine. Once it's placed on the conveyor, it takes a while to get to the end of the conveyor and by that time it's usually cooled to below 50 degrees C. Take it from me, it stinks in here. Fortunately, I've been in the industry over 30 years and I smelt plastic all of that time. The lids are made in parallel to the bins and head to the same destination as their partners in grime. It's not always easy to keep a lid on it. Because the lids are made on a different machine to the bins, we can interchange the colours. So you can have a grey bin with a blue lid, you can have a green bin with a brown lid. Red, blues, greens, yellow, even white. So any colour that you want, we can make. Hmm, what's your favourite, Dave? Blue. To match my eyes. <laughs> Once all the plastic has been moulded, it's time for the assembly. Now the bin is at the end of the conveyor belt. It's had a chance to cool down and a skilled operator can take over. The operator takes the bin from the end of the conveyor trims off any excess plastic, takes the lid from the machine adjacent to this one, puts the lid onto the bin, and then puts in the hinge pins to secure the lid onto the bin itself. And then we put the wheels and axles inside each bin in kit form, ready for it to be assembled on the street. Before the bins are ready for use, they're run through an extensive series of endurance tests. These bad boys have to take on a lot of rubbish. A wheelie bin is useless without wheels that can leap small bumps in the road, survive being lifted onto a huge truck at least once a fortnight, Take a tumble down a curb. And weirdly, be dropped from three meters. Is this one gonna survive? Ooh, nice one. After the all important logo has been printed on the sides and information about what rubbish can go in them, ready to be distributed to councils and hit the streets. Each coloured batch makes a truckload of bins, and MGB make up to 50,000 a week. I do think we ought to appreciate wheelie bins a lot more than we do, because the amount of work they actually do for us across the United Kingdom, when you think about, we couldn't recycle without wheelie bins. If you were to ask me if I think they're a thing of beauty, not quite, but they are a very useful thing to have about. Well said, Dave. It's been a pleasure.